Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here, and today, first of all, yes, I'm in the same room, but I have different lights on. I got yelled at last time on stream for not using my LED lights and things uh, enough. So here we are. Um, today, I want to talk to you guys a bit about the updated Warlock changes, I guess the updated Google Doc um, that I have as far as like Shadowlands Alpha Warlock feedback goes. Um, we spent about, honestly, about four or five hours today on stream updating every section um affliction demonology destruction and some general feedback based off the changes that we got a few days ago or last week depending on what build we're looking at for warlocks in general now some of these changes i'm pretty passionate about i feel pretty strongly about some of them i'm certainly open to i guess feedback uh, let me know what you guys think regardless in the comment section below if there are certain things you want to see things that i didn't mention maybe i forgot or just in general let me know um so let's just jump right into this <clears throat> start talking a bit about it here now I will say this is about six pages long, um, but it's relevant and it's worthwhile. Um, so let's just jump right into this. Now, there are some things that I had around before that are still here. However, I tried to elaborate on all of them. Um, starting off with number one on the docket, general warlock, <clears throat> I guess feedback issues here. Six second pet summons are restrictive when swapping pets mid fight in both Mythic Plus and raids alike. Um, I can summarize this for you pretty much here. There are times that I want my imp for a, a, a singe and I want my fell hunter for an interrupt in a purge within a few seconds of each other in mythic plus my void walker for a taunt and obelisk get the tank dies a lot of things that I want to swap pets for quickly uh, the last feedback that I submitted I suggested fell domination as a potential return uh, it is back which is awesome it was basically a, an ability I wanted back in the document and there it is I'm not saying we were the reason we got it back we weren't necessarily uh, but regardless it's back um, Fell Domination is really good for when your pet dies and you need it out quickly. Um, and to be fair, that's half what I cited the issue was with the pet summon thing before. Fell Domination is good when your pet dies in Torghast, in Mythic Plus, or when you die. You need a pet out fast to get back to the pack and start fighting again. It's not good when you're... It's good, but it doesn't solve the issue of pet twisting. Like I said, where I want my Fell Hunter out for interrupts or purges most of the time. Then I want my Imp for a Dispel and an Obelisk or my Voidwalker for a Taunt. And yes, technically these won't be as big of issues as going into Shadowlands, potentially, depending on scenarios and Mythic Plus. But regardless, Fell Domination doesn't really solve that. Now, if the 6 second Pet Summon was put into the game to try and combat... Or combat Killing pets in PvP, making it actually relevant, because at this point, you kill a Warlock pet to summon it out again in one second, two seconds, and they're good to go, it's irrelevant. A six-second summon makes that a lot different, though. If it was put into the game to make that relevant, just make it a thing in PvP. Just make six seconds, uh, make a six-second pet summon only in PvP, or with War Mode on, or Battle Rounds. It sucks, but I, it doesn't do, it doesn't, it doesn't help in PvE. It's just restrictive. There's no reason for it to be six seconds in PvE. I, I can't think of any. So I want to... That's like the number one point on this spreadsheet. I want to... Or this document. I want to hear their feedback on that. Because we got these changes and there wasn't any talk really about that. Barring Feldom, which to be fair, fell domination helps. But anyways, moving on. A brief talk about corruption here. Corruption in its current state with a cast time for Destro and Demo is an ability that will neither be used, barring uh, the ability that will not be used, barring it being extremely overtuned in later tuning, and it's just not relevant in its current form for either spec in pretty much any scenario. That's just that corruption is not relevant. Uh, if they want it to be like this returning, just iconic ability that nobody uses, well, only AF uses, okay, um, but it's not relevant for Demo or Destro right now. Um, we'll skip over this for the most part. If you want to read it, you can read it. This is just more or less just something I had from the last article uh, about raid comp um, being pretty restricted with so many classes bringing these raid wide utility buffs. Curse of Recklessness and Weakness. Hey, you need at least two Warlocks. But, anyways, okay. Affliction. This was here in the last document. Now, I'm leaving this here for one reason. Well, a few, but. Uh, Malefic Rapture being our main soul shard spender feels like it's more AoE based. Potentially having a more single target based spender that amplifies our dot tick rate on the mob that has unstable affliction applied would fit the single target toolkit better. Soul Rack is that ability. Soul Rack was mentioned uh, in the initial changes for Warlocks in the first post of Shadowlands Alpha. It was removed very quickly. Um, now, there was an ability introduced recently in Torghast, I think three or four builds ago, which still cites Soul Rack. The wording on it is actually Soul Rack has a chance to refund five Soul Shards, which to me implies that Soul Rack was initially supposed to consume five Soul Shards. I don't really know. 
and we're not really sure if that's just like some weird like text that needs to be changed or they still have some um, intention on putting Soul Rack into the game. I, I'll be real with you. I'm pretty sure if Soul Rack was going to be a thing, we would have seen it by now uh, with the big AF changes coming. But we'll see. I left this in here just, just because of that. But for the most part, let's get into the relevant changes here. The return of Unstable Affliction being limited to one, which this happened last build a few days ago. <clears throat> Uh, it's a change that I feel is a step in the wrong direction. It was mentioned that even without picking talents like Siphon Life or Phantom Singularity, Affliction was unable to keep up with her dots on three targets, and that's verbatim from the blue post. I feel that's pretty far from the actual reality of Aff and Mythic Plus and multi-target scenarios. With talents like AC and the 21 second duration that Unstable Affliction has on Alpha right now, it is 21 seconds by the way, managing a single UA on multiple targets is very easy to do. The shard generation it brought in conjunction with Drain Soul in Mythic Plus helped Aft's overall toolkit when transitioning from one pack to another, allowing us to precast see the corruption into Agonies, UA, Vile Taint, and then Rapture Spam, basically putting us to five shards before every pull um, with the available shards. I felt that it also raised the skill ceiling with Affliction a good bit, which was a welcome change, and it did, to be fair, trying to balance, hey, I'm getting a shard from this mob dying with UA on it, uh, and if I'm draining it, I'll get two shards back. I want to dump a Rapture or two here. I want to cast this. I want to do that and try and min-max my shard usage without overcapping. I think it added a lot to that uh, aspect of the game, and I feel like reverting it to a limit of one is not a good thing. Uh, I think reversion to what UA was, one UA per target, but no limit of one, is the best for the spec overall. If a limit to UA is indeed deemed necessary, I feel that a limit of four is a solid middle ground which gives us room to spread dots in Mythic Plus for more Rapture damage while rewarding proper gameplay. Now I'll be real here, I don't think UA needs a limit or should have a limit. It was buff damage wise a bit this build to compensate for being only active on one target, limited to one. I don't think it needs to be limited to one. Um, I'd, I had no issues maintaining a 21 second dot in Mythic Plus. I don't know who possibly could have. Um, but I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, I know that like... I, I, I think it's a bit of an exaggeration saying even with outpicking talents like Siphon Life or Singularity, AF was hard to maintain dots on three targets. I don't think it's very challenging. I know there are different um, levels of skill. People come to play in the game 100%. Um, but regardless, I think that having like UA with no limit rewards like maybe like a higher play skill in a sense, but also with a 21 second duration is not very punishing when it comes to somebody who might be picking up the class initially and it gives them that leeway to learn to balance their dots better and long term improve and become a better player as a whole. So I actually think that's a good counter argument to UA not being limited to one. I think it's better for the spec to not be limited. Um, we'll see where that goes. But I like the play style a lot more when we could have one target or one UA active on multiple mobs. Um, the introduction of Inevitable Demise, let me pull it up in game here, um, it's a welcome change. We all love the IDs back. It's great. It's awesome. Um, however, in its current form, it feels very undertuned damage wise. It needs a buff. There you go. The fact that it also shares the first talent row with the uh, likes of Nightfall and Drain Soul makes it a bit awkward at times. You want both Nightfall and ID in multi-target um, scenarios for the increased value in procs, but at the same time, it greatly devalues Drain Soul. Um, sorry, you greatly value Drain Soul for its shard sniping utility in basically the same scenario. They all overlap. You all want them. You want those abilities basically in the same setting most of the time. Um, I think there needs to be some kind of swap change made breaking up the similarities between these. Now, there obviously is the issue with Sow the Seeds uh, being bugged on Alpha right now, but really just being an ability to see the corruption, even with Sow, you're probably not everyone to cast. First of all, it's on a row with Vile Taint, which Vile Taint gets you more Rapture damage. It does cost a shard, but so does see the corruption. Um, Vile Taint gets you more Rapture damage, because unlike Singularity... Vile Taint applies a dot to every single mob that it hits. It's also on a 20 second cooldown, which Singularity is a 45, so it gets you a lot more value there. Vile Taint is just a choice here with Rapture in the current playstyle, especially if you can extend it with Dark Lair. Um, see the Corruption and so the Seed is in a weird spot. It costs a shard, you're not going to take it in this row, and even if you do, you're probably not going to cast it over Rapture, because they both cost a shard. You're not going to spam so the Seeds with Seed of Corruption for a shard versus rapture it's just in a weird spot man um i know it's an iconic ability but like one change i proposed was potentially swapping id to this row which gives you the option of okay either bile taint or id in mythic plus uh breaking up like the monotony of this first row here the other option is technically um 
I, I sort of touched on a bit was like swapping Soul Conduit with ID. I think that might be a bit too powerful, honestly. Um, and it would give you like the choice of ID, Creeping Death, or Dark Soul in Mythic Plus. And Dark Soul is impactful in Plus, especially with Dark Caller. There's positives and negatives to this. And I don't know if IVs are great alternatives to like breaking up the monotony of this row, but they're and they're all great talent. They're all great abilities. I'd like to see Nightfall baseline. I'd love Drain Soul baseline. Um, but they're all very similar in what they do and in what setting you want them in. You know, I think it needs to be broken up a bit because, yeah, that's that. Um, one thing here I want to talk about too. Currently, Drain Soul applies Shadows Embrace over the course of roughly two seconds because each incremental tick of Drain Soul grants you a stack of Shadows Embrace. Um, Shadow Bolt takes about <clears throat> excuse me. Shadow Bolt takes about eight seconds to do the same because you have to cast three Shadow Bolts with a 1.5 second cast or so, depending on haste, and they all have travel time. I feel like there needs to be a way for Shadow Bolt to stack Shadows Embrace faster. Um, in its current build, Haunt applies Shadows Embrace now as well. Um, at, at one stack, whenever Haunt hits a target. I, I sort of just said TLDR, I, I think it'd be fine to make Shadows Embrace apply two stacks. of, Or to, to make Shadow, Shadow Bolt <coughs> apply two stacks of Shadows Embrace. I don't think it's that big of a deal, honestly. If you open on a Haunt and then have Shadow Bolt as your filler, you can go from one to three, and having Haunt as your actual, like, something you refresh every once in a while, or Shadow Bolt makes it easier to, like, refresh Embrace. I think, like, having it stack two stack, having it stack Shadows Embrace, like, two times or whatever is it, fine. Uh, I think, honestly, it's impactful, and it would help m sort of, like, shore up the difference there, because Drain Soul stacks Shadows Embrace really quick, and, Chows and Shadow Bolt has uh, a little bit of a tougher time doing it, so... Um, now I did sort of mention like haunt here as well. Uh, I proposed a bit of a change to which I had in the previous build trying to separate haunt between UA. They did remove the actual 10% damage amp that UA has on it, uh, like a few builds ago. So that's good. There is a bit of a differentiation between haunt and UA now. Um, I did mention here the fact that we have both dark caller and haunt on the same row here makes for an interesting choice as dark caller sinks your dark soul. Similar to how Destro with Infernal and Dark Soul, uh, Infernal and Dark Soul is on live right now. Every two minutes, you're not holding your Dark Soul for your, you know, Dark Lair. Um, however, I sort of feel like they want Haunt to be like the go-to single-target talent in the sense in this row. But depending on the value that you get with your Dark Lair and tuning and things, it might just be Dark Caller across the board. Um, so that was more or less something I just wanted to highlight. Like, hey, maybe keep an eye on this interaction here. I don't, and honestly, I don't hate if you have a two minute dark lair in general. I think it's fine, um, but that might be something you need to watch because I feel like their intention is like this is more your AOE cleave council based talent. This is single target, but that might not be a thing. Um, and this is just so the seeds basically saying, hey, we need to change so because or figure something out with this talent because it's just not where we are. It feels like this is so out of place, uh, Seed of Corruption, for multiple reasons with this current version of Affliction. You know, whether you love or hate that, just the reality of it. So, Destro here. Now, Destro did get some changes this last build, and I, I'm going to be honest, I, I like the changes. I just think that it's a bit too much RNG here. I know that they want Destro to be this chaotic kind of chaotic, uncontrollable energy kind of spec, but at the same time, I sort of think that idea might need to be shelved a bit, but regardless, let's talk a little bit here. Uh, this highlights Infernal being a 3-minute CD, uh, and how it needs to be a 2. Uh, Infernal being a 3-minute CD is very limiting when it comes to a wide array of scenarios. Um, a reduction to our Infernal CD could be baked into Chaos Bolt or Rain of Fire, basically Shard Spender's baseline, which would be a huge improvement to our damage profile. And let's be real, there are a million uh, ways they can do this. Um, but just getting us a two minute damage profile or a reduced sub three minute one, depending on how many shards you spend, could be a thing too. If the issue of our Infernal being a three minute CD is not addressed through some kind of CD reduction, then I think our damage outside of Infernal needs to be brought up a good bit to compensate for the three minute profile. Now, it sort of has been in this build. I left that in there because Chaos Bolt wasn't really touched, but Reign of Fire was buffed by 30% this build, the most recent build, um, in addition to also getting a new trait called Reign of Chaos here. So, I left that in there to more address, like, single target kind of things, but we'll have to see how tuning is at this point. You, you, we really have no idea. Um, 
At the same time, if you got a two minute uh, infernal, a minor nerf to immolation aura could be in order if the CD was reduced to two minutes. Especially with the new reign of chaos talent and random infernal spawns. Having a guaranteed two minute infernal CD is extremely impactful with a plus, as well as single target slash cleave based raid encounters. The grim war of sacrifice talent has been mostly irrelevant for a long time, and a potential dark caller like talent for Destro would also help solve the issue, just like it has for affliction. Now keep that in mind. I'm gonna say here, this is like over the next two paragraphs here, we go sort of far down the rabbit hole a, a bit. I'm not really like super I'm more so like giving feedback just on, hey, this ability feels good, this feels bad, this could be improved this way, this interaction is this. However, I feel the feedback we give here on Reign of Chaos and maybe like a Dark Caller 2-minute CD reduction-esque ability is actually really relevant. And I get that Reign of Chaos is cool. I get they're trying to bring VOP Major to Destro. I feel like what I describe here, at least to me, is a lot cooler, a lot more iconic, but removes the RNG of Reign of Chaos, which is great as well. So... Further elaborating on Reign of Chaos, I feel the new talent is too RNG. I like it, but it's too RNG. Having that level of RNG, multiple uh, multiple Infernal Spawns versus nothing, tied to such a long cooldown, I feel is not in the best, uh, the spec's best interest. A solution to this is making a simple RPPM like how VOP is on live, without being restricted to only being active during uh, play around the Infernals. Basically, hey, the RNG needs to go, regardless. Like. The RNG, basically, the RNG only when you have your Infernal active needs to go. If you want to make it a permanent VOP, spells and abilities have a chance to summon an Infernal. Go for it. I'm not a, I, I, it's cool. I'm not a huge fan of that play style. It's nowhere near as impactful as it is on live now, because on live, you're extending supremacy stacks. We're more of supremacy. Supremacy is gone. Reign of Chaos replaces that, so it won't be as impactful. I mean, at times it will be, Mythic Plus, multiple procs on one pack, but I mean, it's cool. It has that cool element to it. Although it's RNG, it's less RNG than this. Um, a solution to this making... A solution to this is making a simple RPPM, read that. There's also the possibility of making... Reign of Chaos, summon an Infernal for 10 seconds after X shards are spent. Now, this was suggested to me on stream in chat, and I sort of like this idea. I sort of don't. It depends. I wanted to throw it in. It's like, hey, this is an alternative to not making it RPPM and removing RNG. It gives the player control when you want to proc your Infernal within reason, right? Because, hey, you have Reign of Fire and you have Chaos Bolt that both, that both consume shards. Um, now... Let's be real here. You're you would probably be able to play this pretty well by hey okay spending you know one two three shards will proc my next infernal. I have five shards going in the next pack. Pull big, proc an infernal. Drop two random fires, uh, and like just keep chaining uh, like infernals within reason, right? You know, um, which is sort of similar to like which is sort of interesting to how random chaos works now. Um, and one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of it. While your initial Infernal is active, every Soul Shard you spend has a 15% chance to summon an additional Infernal, which is very similar to how I just suggest, or what I just suggested here. Um, Reign of Fire and, Ch and Chaos Bolt, both Shard consumers, right? The issue with Reign of Chaos here is that, and I guess this would sort of be an issue in a sense here too, sort of, but there's no RNG in like after X Shards. If you proc an Infernal off the very first spell that you cast that consumes a Soul Shard, your first Reign of Fire, you essentially have a higher chance of proccing more Infernals because that second Infernal is going to feed you more partial Shard Fragments. And if you proc off the first one and the second one, you're just spamming Rain of Fire or Chaos Bolt over and over and over. But if you don't proc off the first one or the second one, it gets harder and harder. Well, not a minute harder, but you're not gaining that advantage. It's not getting easier to proc an Infernal. It's just RNG on top of RNG. And, like, I get you want that chaotic kind of feel for Destro, but... I think people are just a little tired of the RNG. And the fact that Random Chaos is tied to a three-minute cooldown, with this kind of RNG, it's not... If Infernal was a two-minute cooldown, that would be very, very, very different. And I think this level of RNG would be relatively accepted because, hey, like, it's a pretty big upside with a two-minute damage profile. It's good anyways. But three minutes and two minutes is very different. Very, very different. Um, so I hope to see some kind of, like potential changes to Reign of Chaos. I know it's new talent, but I just don't think it's been very well received by most of the community. I think I've, I've, I'm pretty receptive to a lot of stuff. Um, I think I like it more than most everybody else at this point. A lot of people, at least. Like, I don't hate it, but I don't love the RNG. I don't think everybody else has been as receptive to it as I have. But regardless, um, this is the change that I'd like to see to Reign of Chaos here. 
It encapsulates like the sh the Shadowlands returning legend like like um iconic abilities. This is it. A change that can be made to Reign of Chaos in an attempt to counteract the RNG that it brings in its current form is to change Reign of Chaos to read Summon Infernal now summons two additional Infernals. What does that remind you of? That's Legion, which is similar to the artifact trait Lord of Flames that we had in Legion, which was iconic. Now, Lord of Flames summoned three additional Infernals, so you had four, but Lord of Flames was also a 10-minute ICD. Um, so there's some tuning that we would need here. But regardless, like... This both this both fits the actual returning ability side of Shadowlands, as well as making our 3-minute Inferno CD much more impactful when removing the Reign of Chaos RNG. Um, now, this gets this goes a little bit further here. So, if the Destruction Dark Caller trait did indeed replace Grimoire of Sacrifice, which we talked about up here, this gives you the option of choosing a 3-minute larger AoE-based profile in Reign of Chaos with multiple extra Infernals, or a two minute damage profile with one Infernal, but if you take Dark Soul, it allows you to sync your Dark Soul with it. And even if you don't, a two minute Infernal versus a three minute Infernal is pretty big. Um, I honestly, like, that sounds awesome to me. Lord of Flames was iconic, an iconic, iconic ability in Legion. Like, I mean, and infernals are awesome. They're fun. Like VOP RNG is fun having multiple infernals down. Why not just give us a guaranteed three, two, three infernals here? It would take tuning. It would probably take a nerf to immolation or as damage or like the other infernals would maybe deal less damage, something like that. But you can make it work. And honestly, I don't know if we really even need a nerf, right? It gives you the option of, hey, okay, I want maybe I want rain of chaos. But it's going to be a three minute infernal profile. 3 minute damage profile with your Infernal, but you know it's going to be really strong. You're going to have 3 Infernals pulsing Immolation Aura. You're going to have insane shard generation, being able to spam Rain of Fire um, over and over because you have shards just flowing in. And if you want to do that Mythic Plus, all right. If they pull around your CDs, great. That's great. You've got a huge profile every 3 minutes. If you want to opt for, let's say, maybe like a Dark Caller-esque trait here, um, Dark Infernal, whatever, um, that gives you a 2 minute damage profile. A two minute infernal. Okay, you don't have three infernals. You don't have the same shard gen. You don't have the same emulation aura damage. But honestly, one infernal still deals a lot of damage with emulation aura, and it still fuels rain of fires. And you can sink your dark soul with it, or even just have like an extra few infernals over the course of a run or a boss. It gives you a lot of play here without the RNG. Like I, I, I normally don't go this far down the rabbit hole. I guess in a sense with this kind of like like um feedback but i think this is like spot on i really do I, I i like how this sounds i get you can hear i get excited talking about this lord of flames is iconic i would love to see that ability back 100 percent removes the rng of random chaos it's cool but the rng uh, people are tired of rng i don't want rng on top of my infernal because guess what if i summon a three minute infernal and get no procs this is a dead talent for six minutes yeah so, there needs to be some kind of a guaranteed something here. Um, yeah. Wanted to buy Lord of Flames. Uh, Roaring Blaze with Conflag in its current form will have a high uptime in most single target settings, which is fine. The fact that it does not affect Chaos Bolt to me is odd due to the fact that Chaos Bolt is Chaos Damage, which is Fire and Shadow and all that. With Chaos Bolt's Mastery slash Crit Scaling, I do see that a flat 30% damage increase might be a bit too strong. But I feel Roaring Blaze would be better thematically if it did affect Chaos Bolt, but probably needs to be brought down to a smaller percentage like bonus, which is fine. It also further pushes you towards Internal Combustion, uh, Channel Demon Fire, Soul Fire, the abilities that deal fire damage, which is um, interesting. Uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's probably sort of a bad thing. I don't know. Um, I don't really know. Uh, let's be real here. Um, but that's something that we can look at further down the line. Um, and it depends on what, what they do with Reign of Chaos and things. But TLDR right now, I sort of think like Roaring Blade should affect Chaos Bolt and just be tuned a bit lower damage amp-wise here. Um, now, this is important here too. The changes to internal combustion. The second I saw this, I thought to myself, how long is Immolate's actual dot? Like... You can Pandemic Immolate to 24 seconds. The changes to internal combustion uh, make it consume 7 seconds of your Immolate and not 5. Now, it might seem like a buff. In, in a sense, it is, like, pure damage-wise. But you're casting, essentially, like, you're, you can go Immolate on the target, you know, for 18 seconds or whatever. Chaos Bolt, Chaos Bolt. That's going to consume 14 seconds, and you have to cast those Chaos Bolts, and they have travel time. Like, your Immolate is gone. I think like, th this makes managing your Immolate just more of a pain. 
Um, I think it was made with the best of intentions, uh, the the actual change, but I don't think it really does a whole lot for us in a good way. Like maybe with more, maybe down the line, it might be better. But honestly, it, it just makes it more of a headache. I, I feel personally, I think Ice is already good. You can just revert it to five seconds and it's fine. Um, at the same time, it'd just be cool to see it deal a bit of damage based on how long your emulate has left on the target without consuming a part of the effect. But hey, whatever. It's fine. Um, Soulfire in its new form on Alpha feels a good bit under tuned damage wise. It does. It deals like 300 more damage. It's 1730 here damage wise for a Soulfire, which is a four second cast on a one minute cooldown. Chaos Bolt deals 1400 damage. It is not, it is under tuned. Um, having a four second cast time with a one minute cooldown, but dealing a small amount of damage, um, more than a Chaos Bolt's underwhelming. Even with shard generation and an instant cast incinerate. With it being a one minute CD, I think potentially taking a part of what Soulfire is on live, like a hybrid kind of spell, uh, essentially whenever you cast like a Chaos Bolt, it reduces the CD on Soulfire, would be a really solid middle ground. Um, I do think Destro, like I said a bunch on stream, probably needs some kind of other ability, like to break up the monotony of what Destro has been for five expansions now. I mean, to be fair, you have the option of potentially Channel Demon Fire or Soul Fire or Internal Combustion, and I'm sure you'll probably have something here. But I mean, honestly, I like to see Shadow Burn Baseline or Soul Fire, but I think it's undertuned. It could be changed damage wise, and it could also be like um, altered to where Chaos Bolt reduces the CD on this thing by like maybe two seconds per Chaos Bolt cast. It's important to note that Soulfire can be havoc and it does give you two shards, and it does give you, like, a double incinerate, technically, because you're in a Havoc. Um, so the option of, like, hey, having Roaring Blaze and going, like, Havoc, you know, uh, Havoc, like, I guess, Conflag, Mo, Soulfire, incinerate off the instant cast, then, like, I guess maybe Conflag, Bolt, Bolt is an option. But with how slow things are in Alpha right now, who knows what Havoc sequencing is going to be like. It was buffed by an additional two seconds a few days ago, but a four-second cast in a Havoc window is a bit uh, spicy. Sketchy, probably. Um, I did mention Hellfire here. I would just love to see Hellfire back, honestly. It's just me, but for the most part, it's just I left it there because, hey, why not? So, now, let's in Demonology is the last fact I want to talk about here. Um... And Demo is near and dear to my heart, obviously, but I put this up here as a as the number one problem with Demonology right now. This needs to be addressed. We need to at least, if they don't want to give us an interrupt, we need to know why. Um, Demonology needs a baseline interrupt. It does not require us to change something besides the Felguard. We are directly punished for doing so by losing such a talent such as Soul Strike, Demonic Strength, as well as the bonus damage the Felguard deals baseline is Demonology. And this is what, I mean, this is what Blizzard has built for us. This is the spec they built for us. Like, I'm not angry at them. I'm just saying, this is what you've given us. I mean, you ha if you give this to us and say, oh, play your Fell Hunter, but the spec you designed doesn't work that way. We can't use two of our talents. We don't get the bonus damage from our Felguard not being out. And now we can maybe like, okay, if you want us to interrupt every once in a while with a Fell Hunter, we can have our Felguard out. Fell Domination out of Fell Hunter. Awesome. But then we have a six second summon on our Felguard again. Like, it doesn't work. It, it, it's it's like buying a car with no motor. It doesn't work. Like, it, it, it needs... I'm, pa I'm passionate about it. It's frustrating, but it doesn't work. In the current state of the game, with Mythic Plus and just things being so relevant, having not having an interrupt bound to your spec without jumping through hoops and losing 30% of your damage is not where you want to be. Demonology will never be brought to Mythic Plus in a high-end setting, ever, unless it is so incredibly OP like when they first buff Explosive Potential, or it doesn't matter. It's not going to happen again. It needs an interrupt. Demo is the only spec in the game without an interrupt, excluding the Fell Hunter, um, which is extremely limiting when it comes to Mythic Plus. There's also the option of giving Demonology... Um, a, an ability similar to BM Hunter's Animal Companion talent, which would help solve the issue. Basically, you have uh, like your Felguard out and one non Felguard pet. You can have your Fel Hunter for interrupt, an imp for a singe, your Voidwalker to taunt. You can make it work. Um, yeah, there you go. Now you might run into some issues with Fel domination there and interactions. I don't really know. Um, I think personally, the easiest is issue is to quite literally just do this. Just go, hey. Uh, all right, demonology needs to interrupt. I, I, I can save everybody time. All right, what do we have here? Um, oh, call Fell Hunter. All right, cool. Drag that into our main spell book. Set it and forget it. That's it. That's all you got to do. It's quite literally an interrupt. It, it's an ability. That, it's a PvP talent. 
that summons a fell hunter that interrupts the target on a 24 second cooldown make it cost a shard at this point i don't want it to but like okay probably not but like either way like it's the easiest fix ever you click you drag you're done that's it you're done that's it um at the same time like we could have animal companion which would be cool it fits the theme of demon island as a whole being a master summoner kind of thing um, and there is also the option of giving our thug art an interrupt as well, which could be a thing, but you know, <laughs> we've had that option for a while. So, um, there are three very, very easy changes here that we can, that can be made to fix this issue. Um, but yeah, without an interrupt, like honestly in current modern wow, like it's just, it's like buying a car with no motor, man, buying a car with no transmission. You're just not going to get anywhere. Uh, that's just the truth, honestly. Um, but yeah, I think there's plenty of changes they can make to this, and uh, hopefully we hear something back. If not, I hope we hear feedback as to why. So, um, this is, now, these last two points here are, like, actually pretty relevant, um, and I didn't talk about them in the last Google Doc very much. So, the loss of explosive potential and other haste amps is extremely impactful when it comes to Demon's Rotation and Tyrant setup. With Shadow Bolt being our main Soul Shard generator, outside of Demon Bolt Prox and Soul Strike if talented, and it being a two second cast greatly hinders our ability to fully set up our Tyrants with consumption and just maintain our rotation in general. Uh, it takes a while to build back to five shards, or three depending on what you're doing. Um, but per, like on Alpha, I'm not able to generate enough shards quickly enough in some of my, my Felguard, my Grimoire Felguard, I'm sorry, um, Vile Fiend, Dreadstalkers, Imps, through Hand of Gul'dan before others start expiring due to longer cast times that Shadow Bolt has. Um, this has previously been solved with uh, gearing later into expansion or in BFA's case, exposed potential um, and gearing being like more haste on gear later on. But uh, recently called Dreadstalkers, uh, actual cast time was reduced. Um, it's a talent. It's like a passive you get when you level up as demonology. Um, you can actually see it here, I think, maybe? Uh, it's, it's just, okay, I already got it. I'm 55, I think. I think it's 52, 54. Either way, um, I, I think a reduction to actual Shadow Bolt's cast time by like 0.5 seconds would go a long way as far as like just improving Demon Knowledge's overall rotational fluidity. Um, Grimoire Felguard, this is actually a big thing too. Grimoire Felguard, which keep in mind we're at this point, I feel like we're probably playing with the changes to demonic consumption um, was initially a 1.5 minute cooldown quite literally it was changed to a two minute cooldown with less than 48 hours until bfa's release not alpha to beta not like one beta build to another this was when beta was essentially over and bfa was coming out in less than two days they changed it from a 1.5 minute cd to a two minute cd i think nerfed the damage a bit um i'm sure they had the reasoning it is what it is but the thing is, our Tyrant is a 1.5 minute CD. So it puts you in a really weird spot, like, well, do I want to hold my Tyrant for my Felguard, or am I holding Felguard for Tyrant, or what am I doing here? Um, changing this back to 1.5 minute CD is a huge step in the right direction. It just needs to be done. Um, especially with how consumption works now. It doesn't, it doesn't consume the imps you spawn. It just takes health from all your pets. It's like Thalcao's consumption meets demonic consumption. You want your Grimoire Felguard out, Barring tuning and things changing in this row, but um, you want your Felguard out, you want your Vile Fiend here, and you want to extend your Felguard. You want, I mean, you don't want to, have to hold your Tyrant for it because that's where most of your damage is. So, this needs to be looked at. Um, the change to consumption sort of made this more relevant again. It's relevant now on live. Technically, technically it's easier to sync on live now than it is on alpha because of VOP minor, but regardless, this needs to be looked at here. Um, hopefully, we get some kind of change there but it'll probably take a nerf to Grimoire Felguard's damage. It's important to note here, we don't want a nerf to Grimoire Felguard's duration. Now, I don't know the exact duration of optimal Tyrant setup on Alpha right now with Felguard. A nerf to its duration is not a good thing because, okay, uh, because we want like max time to set up our Tyrant to siphon life from our Felguard. A nerf to its duration could very well be a nerf to consumption and have ripples across the whole spec just nerf it's like it's like fell storm damage it's fine i feel at least but yeah there's that um now further elaborating on rotational fluidity i feel that summon demonic tyrant is best suited to be an instant cast spell rather than a two second cast um this is actually feedback that I get a lot on stream and on YouTube. Um, it allows more pets to be summoned before previous ones expire, which plays well with consumption. Because think about it, like, I mean, we have to stop casting like a hand of Gul'dan like, a, like two seconds earlier than normal because we have to summon our Tyrant. 
before everything else expires. Um, as well as giving the spec a bit more mobility slash fluidity. Fluidity. Uh, summon Violfiend is also a two second cast, which could also become instant. I feel uh, I'd much rather have Tyrant be instant than Violfiend, but they both could be in the end. Um, having cast times on these spells just feels a bit odd. Uh, the fact that they cost shards and things, and you're casting them at, while having other pets active and trying to set up a Tyrant just feels a little slow. Demonology is one of those specs that's really, really benefited from haste, um, almost more than most other specs in the game. I feel like um, over like over its like hi history, at least this version of Demo and Having these having these clunky pet cast times and like slow shadow bolt cast and shard generation just not really where I want to be with it. So I think that is a good change to look at here. Um, and one of the last things that I want to talk about here, Nether Portal. Now there was a buff to inner demons actual damage, uh, the demons that you spawn, as well as the demons that come out of Nether Portal. Nether Portal. Let's read the wording of Nether Portal. Tears open a portal to the Twisting Nether for 15 seconds. Every time you every time you spend soul shards. Okay, to be fair, I thought it said whenever. But regardless, every time you spend soul shards, you'll also command demons from the nether to come out and fight, fight for you. What that means is it doesn't matter if you spend three shards in a hand of Gul'dan or one. You're going to still summon one pet. It's whenever you actually cast a spell that consumes soul shards. It doesn't matter if it's one, two, three. It doesn't make a difference. If there was one to consume five, it wouldn't matter. Um, if Nether Portal is to remain a talent in Shadowlands, which we have no idea, it probably is because they buffed it, um, it needs to be changed to spawn demons based off the amount of total, uh, sorry, the amount of soul shards you spend and not, I'm actually going to change this right here, um, and not every time, because every time promotes this rotational, th this rotation of Shadowbolt Hand of Gul'dan, Shadowbolt Hand of Gul'dan, uh, and that's not what we do. Like, you don't cast a Hand of Gul'dan for less than three shards unless you're, like, setting up a Tyrant on live. Or, like, I guess, like, on Alpha will be relevant, too. But you don't cast that as part of your normal rotation. Um, it also just doesn't really fit the spec very well. Like, I mean, it shouldn't matter. I shouldn't be having to, like, spam for less demons to summon more demons out. It's a really simple fix. It might need a bit of tuning, like, damage-wise and stuff. But it's, it's a really simple fix. So, I think that should be looked at, too. Um, there is one thing here that I left off, and I just remembered this. I'll show you right here. I'm in Meldraxxus. Let me jump down. Uh, hopefully I don't die. So, um, I'll put a turnip down here. I want you all to watch... Can I put a turnip here? I hope so. Perfect. I do not have I do not have my fellow guard out right now. My actual pet. I don't have him. So, here's what we're going to do. Grimoire fellow guard. Summon Vile Fiend. Watch this. Now, they track Summon Vile Fiend. Felguard and Dreadstalkers through a totem tracking system, which you'll see below my player portrait right here. They also track Tyrant during it. Now, let me show you what happens. Let me show you what happens here. Here's my turnip. It's nice. My pet is not out. Watch this. We are going to cast Felguard, Biofiend, some dogs, and we'll just sit here for a little bit, okay? Because we, we can see the duration here. Here are their actual totems. There are two dog butts here. A Vile Fiend. A Felguard. We're going to go Tyrant. Tyrant's going to extend all these. Watch. Bam. There you go. 15 seconds on dogs. 14 on Tyrant. We got a Vile Fiend. Crank and we're ready to go. We actually got five shards back from Baleful. That's great. Watch this. Watch these dogs. Cast dogs. It killed my dogs. But there are two new dogs here. It killed my dogs. It overrides... The actual, like, two random pet totems here, which is what they track pets with. Um, now, previously, this was an issue with our Tyrant, too, because Tyrant counted as a totem here. It appears that they fixed the bug by not having your Tyrant count as a totem if you have other pets out. Because if I summon him by himself, he'll count as one. But if I have pets out and I summon him, he doesn't push any pets off, basically like, killing them there. And if you notice, we also did not get any demonic core refunds from those dogs that uh, died or pushed out or whatever. Um, and if you watch, they had like five seconds left when I summoned the other set of dogs here. So basically, you're limited to four uh, pet totem tracking spawns per uh, forever, I suppose. Like, we have Tyrant in 20 seconds here, so I'll show you what happens. Um, 
it, it's a bug. It, the tyrant bug was fixed. Tyrant no longer pushes out a random pet. I've had times where I had two dogs like that out, a Felguard uh, from Grimoire and a Vile Fiend, and I spawned two more dogs, and I actually killed my Grimoire Felguard and my Vile Fiend, and I had four dogs out. It's just random. I don't know what uh, they actually used to like, track that, but watch this. Like here, Here's my Felguard, or my Tyrant. Watch this. There he is. They... Tyrant consumes like an actual totem slot, I suppose, when uh, there are no other pets active here. Actually, let's do this. Let's see if he gets pushed out or not. Let's go Vile Fiend, Felguard, Dogs. He only spawned one dog? No, he's okay. So he did not get pushed out there. Um, and everybody's still alive and happy here. There's two dogs, a Felguard, and a Vile Fiend. Um, but that needs to be fixed. It's just a bug, honestly, but it's important to note, uh, and highlight here. So, yeah. Honestly, though, as far as everything goes, like, it might seem like I'm being critical of the changes, and, like, I'm not. I mean, I am, but, like, I'm giving feedback on them. Um, honestly, I'm very happy with how Affliction is right now. The only thing I don't like about AF is just the reversion to UA being limited one. Um, besides that, I love AF. I think it's in a good spot, toolkit-wise. Damage is irrelevant right now. Damage tuning will come later on in beta. Um, Destro, I, I like Reign of Chaos, the idea behind it. I don't love the RNG. I like the changes to um, Soulfire, in a sense. I wish it was a little bit of a hybrid to where it's on live, but I think, like, honestly, seeing these changes made this early, it's a good step in the right direction. I like it. Uh, and Demo, like, dude, getting Baleful Invocation baked into Tyrant. That's quite literally what we suggested in the Google Doc the first time. Oh my gosh, it's great, dude. It's great. So, once again, Blizzard, thank you for, you know, taking player feedback into account. Um, it's awesome. It's it, These changes are great, you know, and it really helps reassure the player base and people in general that, you know, about everything. It's good. Um, but yeah, like I said, dudes, uh, I'm not trying to be, I'm not intending on being overly critical here or anything. Uh, I'm just giving feedback on what I think could be done to probably further improve, I guess, the class or the spec, specs as a whole. So yeah, let me know, dudes, in the comment section below what you think about uh, the proposed changes. I'll have a link to the Google Doc down below um, in the comment section, uh, probably video description somewhere down there. Um, so if you want it, I'll hop in there. It's also pinned on my Twitter. Uh, so if you want to follow me on Twitter or just hop on Twitter uh, and grab it there, you can too. But yeah, dudes, let me know below what you guys think. Uh, I guess let me know. I'm curious actually to hear what spec you guys are thinking about playing the most here. Um, I guess like mostly based off of its toolkit because damage, once again, doesn't matter right now. Uh, but yeah, guys, thanks so much. I appreciate you guys being here. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to smash those like, share, and subscribe buttons. It helps out a lot. And I will see you guys again soon on stream. Peace.